Round 12 in the Aviva Premiership saw the first match action of 2014. Clubs were looking to make a positive start to the new year, with the next round of league matches over a month away. The round saw adverse weather conditions and an enthralling drawn match with some brilliant individual performances. The Friday night game saw an intriguing clash between second and fourth, with 2012 champions Harlequins visiting high flying Northampton. The first half saw a battle between the fly halves, with Nick Evans and injury stricken Stephen Myler trading penalty kicks. Ben Bottica came on to replace Evans after the break, but Myler hobbled on, though he looked in some discomfort. George North was again looking dangerous for Northampton, and when presented with an opening, he took full advantage, shrugging off Charlie Walker to cross over for the game's first try. Paul Doran Jones was shown yellow for Quinns after coming offside at a mall, and the hosts looked likely to score again. They did so through skipper Dylan Hartley, who was able to squeeze out opposite number David Ward at the crucial moment. Saints did suffer a late setback as George PC was sinbin for this high tackle, but they had enough for their 10th victory of the season. The first five minutes saw Phil Godman and Danny Cipriani notch a penalty each. But soon after, both were guilty of missing opportunities from the kicking tee. Phil Godman. Well, he's missed it. That is a bad miss. With the game poised after 22 minutes, Sale moved through the gears and some slick passing left Tom Brady with the chance to grab the game's first try. Falcons have been notoriously short on tries this season, but they managed to score here. Andy Saul powering over after good work from the forwards. But then the hosts found themselves a man down. Dr. Carlo Del Fava was sent to the bin and went into the break five points down. The second half saw only one score from the boot of sales Nick McLeod, giving the Sharks an invaluable away win. Tabletopping Saracens blasted Worcester away in round 11 with their first half display, and it was much the same story at Kingsholm. Gloucester struggled to cope with Sarri's attacking prowess, with scrum half Jimmy Cowan sent to the sin bin for bringing down Mako Vunipola's charge inside the first five minutes. Owen Farrell slotted the penalty, before just minutes later Neil de Kock had the game's first try. The visitors extended their lead further through the Premiership's leading try scorer David Strettle. Grabbing his eighth try of the season. Billy Twelve Trees' penalty did get the Cherry and Whites on the scoreboard before half time, but Sarries held a commanding 16 point lead. The visitors' scrum was providing a platform for the backs to do the damage. And after yet another successful set piece, it was Alex Good who profited for the Sarri's third try. Gloucester were given hope as Saracens lost two men to the bin. Billy Vunipola and captain Steve Borthwick both booked for offences deep inside their own territory. And while the hosts were unable to capitalise on their numerical advantage, they did manage a consolation try through Matt Cox. Worcester travelled to the Medeski Stadium knowing they needed a win against lower league rivals London Irish to give them hope of a league revival in 2014. Unfortunately for the Warriors, the mercurial James O'Connor was in the mood for Irish, notching this penalty to bring the sides into the break level at 6 all. O'Connor grabbed a brace of kicks after the restart to stretch the Exiles in front, and Worcester's task was made harder still when Leonardo Senatore was binned. O'Connor ran in the game's only try on the hour mark, displaying the fleet-footed movement that has made him one of World Rugby's hottest prospects. Worcester had no answer to the Australians' point scoring, and Irish were able to close out the game, crucially denying their opponents any sniff of a losing bonus point. It had been over a decade since Bath won at Welford Road, and in a classic encounter they came within two minutes of achieving the feat. The Tigers had opened their scoring account first, Miles Benjamin forcing his way over after sustained pressure in the opposition territory. But then came the Bath backlash, Nick Abendanen linking up with colleague Anthony Watson who ran in for the score. Carl Eastman, fresh from a brilliant score at Franklin Gardens in round 11, created momentum that gave Francois Lowe the chance to put Bath ahead.
The first half finished in a kicking battle between the fly halves, as Owen Williams and George Ford traded penalties, sending the visitors to the break with a six-point advantage. The Bath backline continued to look deadly going forward, and they had their third try through Jonathan Joseph's determined finish. Bath were ten points to the good with 20 minutes to play, and the Tigers' resolve was being severely tested. The home fans rallied, and replacement Thomas Waldron was on hand to heave over the try line. And with the clock running down, it was back rower Jamie Gibson who grabbed the crucial score, drawing the sides level on 27 points. Williams failed to add the extras, giving Leicester their second home draw of the season. It was a good contest. It was, you know, two good sides, and we both had a crack, and um, it was a draw a fair result. I don't know. I don't suppose anybody. I mean, I suppose maybe they'll be more pleased with the result than ourselves. But no, we'll take the two points, and nothing's over till it's over. So there's a long way to go yet. Exeter's defeat at Twickenham Stadium last weekend was put quickly out of mind as they took just one minute to notch their first score. Dave Lewis running in for the Chiefs. Wasps, for their part, were looking error-prone, but did manage to take something from the first half through the boot of Elliot Daly. The second half saw the hosts invigorated, and with a gap appearing in the Chiefs' defences, scrum half Joe Simpson took full advantage to nudge Wasps in front. Simpson's afternoon got better when he denied Henry Slade a certain try with an unbelievable last-ditch tackle. Brilliant defending from Joe Simpson, whose second-half performance has been worthy of man of the match. Slade levelled things up with a 72nd-minute penalty, and the game looked to be headed for a draw. But with time up, veteran kicker Andy Goode found the post with this drop goal to give Wasps the most dramatic of victories and keep them above Exeter in the table. So with the Premiership taking a break for European fixtures, Saracens and Northampton both look untouchable in the first two spots. Fast draw at Welford Road keeps them third, with Quinns and Tigers locked on 32 points each. Wins for Wasps and Sharks keep them in contention, and Exeter make up the midfield bunch. At the foot of the table, the Exiles' win over Worcester launches them further from the danger zone, with the Falcons down to 11th after another home defeat. So for highlights and full match replays, log on to premiershiprugby.tv.